Drugs called statins are powerful weapons in the fight against heart disease. Many Americans use statins to lower their cholesterol and reduce their risk of heart problems. Are statins right for everybody? And joining us today from Stern Cardiovascular Foundation is Dr. Daniel Otten. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here. We're talking statins. What are they used for? Well, uh, they're used predominantly to lower one's cholesterol. There's uh, many risk factors for heart disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, uh, family history, smoking, and, uh, and high cholesterol. We've seen uh, over the years, as we've looked at what risk factors there are for heart disease, that having a high cholesterol, and in particular having a high of what we call the bad cholesterol, the LDL, uh, and even having a low of the good cholesterol, which is the HDL, and some other factors that we're still learning about, but overall globally having cholesterol that's not at the goals that we now think are the best for the patients is associated with higher risk for heart disease. All right. Well, how do statins work? Well, there's, uh, there's ways we are pretty confident that we know how they work, and there's ways we're still discovering. Um, there's, a, there's a protein in the liver, and it's got a complicated long name, uh, but the abbreviated form, HMG-CoA reductase. All right, this is a, that's the, believe it or not, that's the simplified way of saying it. <laughs> this protein is responsible for um, essentially building up the bodily uh, cholesterol. And the statins predominantly work by blocking and inhibiting this kind of protein. All right, well, how effective are they? They're impressively effective. Um, people who uh, have high cholesterol, it's been found that 30 to 60 percent reductions of people's cholesterol is achievable with statin medicines. In people who already have heart disease, one can get up to a 40 percent reduction of what we call major cardiac events, so death, heart attacks, strokes, hospitalizations for these kinds of things, up to 40 percent. And we even are believing now, with some of the important studies that have come out, that even people who have risk factors but have not yet had a major cardiac event, that, that future cardiac events can be reduced by up to 20 percent by stents, and we're still learning about this. Let's talk about side effects. You mentioned them. What are some of the more significant ones? Some of the significant side effects of statins are going to include muscle aches. Right? This only happens in about up to 10 percent of patients. Um, this, of course, is based off of the studies that we have. I do think that clinical practice has shown that these side effects may be a little bit higher than some of the studies have shown. A majority of the patients by far will not have these side effects, but up to 10 percent of people can have muscle aches. Um, people can also have um, elevation in certain liver proteins. This ups, happens in maybe up to 3 percent of patients. It's important to realize that in both of the side effects I just described, when one stops the medicine, if that's the cause, these problems will resolve. People can have, very rarely, less than 0.1 percent, people can actually have real muscle damage from the cholesterol medicines, something that has a, a longer name called rhabdomyolysis. Um, this is very, very rare. Are there alternatives to statins? Well, again, what I would say is the number one alternative to statins ideally is prevention. Um, I actually always am individualizing, of course, my care and my recommendations when it comes to statins. The, it, how, what kind of statins and the dosages and how aggressive I might be in prescribing these statins are dependent highly on what someone's risk factors are and whether or not they've already had problems with their heart or problems with stroke. So improving one's diet, a, Mediterra a Mediterranean diet I think is coming out as being a very desirable kind of diet. I'm oftentimes quite humble with my recommendations, just moderating people's portion sizes, getting balanced uh, intake from various food groups, and watching certain kinds of fats and, uh, and certain kinds of carbohydrates as well. Um, exercise, smoking cessation, um, controlling one's blood pressure, basically controlling all the cardiac risk factors is an alternative to a statin. In terms of medication alternatives to statins, um, I will say this, there certainly are not any as impressive as the statins. Um, there are some that have been out there and uh, we're actually learning more about whether or not they're as effective. Some of them are as effective at lowering the bad cholesterol, but they may not be as effective as, at lowering what we call the clinical events. Are they having, because of that lower cholesterol, fewer heart attacks, not dying as early, um, not being hospitalized for heart trouble as much? That's really what we'd love to see. 
Because at the end of the day, as we're discovering more of how statins work, I think what we're realizing is that their benefit is probably much more than just lowering the cholesterol. They are, they're, they're, they're actually quite impressive. I do encourage, of course, as I said at the beginning, maintaining a certain sense of humility about prescribing medications always. But the statins have been a very, very important contribution to improving cardiovascular health. All right, Dr. Daniel Alton, thanks so much for joining us here on Heart of the Matter on Smart Medicine. Pleasure.